Is Occidental Petroleum a buy now? Oxy stock has surged with the increase in the price of oil. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway owns 24% of Occidental, plus more with warrants. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for Oxy. You'll want to stay till the end when we give our rating. Along the way, there's going to be a key bonus metric that just might be the tipping point when analyzing Occidental Petroleum for your stock portfolio. This analysis is going to be intense, but it's going to be worth it. Before we get into these valuable metrics, how has Occidental stock performed? Right now, Occidental trades for $62.89 per share. Year to date, their stock price is pretty much flat, but they've gained 10% in the last couple of months. Even with these recent gains, this is under the S&P 500. In the last five years, Occidental has also trailed the market, but the company is up more than six times from their lows in October of 2020. They're beating the market on a shorter time period in the last couple of years. Going back before the global financial crisis, in the last 18 and a half years, Occidental has compounded at 4% annually. Keep in mind their average dividend yield is added to this. Right now, Occidental pays a 1% dividend yield. They beat the market for most of this period. From 2019 till 2021, they underperformed the market, and then they beat the market since. Occidental trades $7 above its 52-week low. They're down $14 from their 52-week high. Occidental is a big business. They have a $55.5 billion market cap and an $85 billion enterprise value. But the burning question is, why is Warren Buffett investing into Occidental Petroleum? Occidental Petroleum is an independent exploration and production company with operations in the United States, Latin America, and the Middle East. At the end of 2022, the company reported net proven reserves of 3.8 billion barrels of oil equivalent. Net production averaged 1.1 thousand barrels of oil equivalent per day in 2022, at a ratio of 75% oil and natural gas liquids and 25% natural gas. Now let's dive deep into Occidental's numbers. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. The average business earns a 7% return on capital. Looking for a benchmark that's double this can build in margin of safety based on the quality of the company. Occidental is a commodity producer in the cyclical oil and natural gas industry. Their returns on capital have fluctuated with the price of oil specifically. When oil went negative in 2020, Occidental also had negative returns. Since then, as the price of oil has increased, Occidental's returns have increased. While their returns have been all over the board and cyclical in the last five years, they earned 24% returns in their most recent year and 16% returns in their last 12 months. When these are averaged out in these last five years, Occidental earned 7% returns on capital, just about in line with an average business, although it hasn't really been very close to this in most of this time. Their returns have steadily increased for the last three years, yet on our first metric, this is an X. Metric number two, we want to see growth in the company, especially growth in their profitability. We're looking for five-year revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth. These all need to be up for this to be a check. We'll also include their numbers in their last 12 months, which aren't shown on this chart. In this time, Occidental had a big acquisition of Anadarko Petroleum that took place in August of 2019 for $57 billion, making it the world's fourth largest oil and gas acquisition to date. Recently in August 2023, Occidental acquired Carbon Engineering for $1.1 billion. They're a direct air capture technology company. On the back of this big Anadarko acquisition, Occidental has grown their operations. Since oil has rebounded, Occidental's grown their revenues by 77%. Their earnings or their net incomes, which were negative in 2020, have grown by 64%. And the company has more than tripled their free cash flows since 2018. That is huge growth across the board. A massive check on metric number two. Great to see their free cash flow growth especially. Free cash flow is the lifeblood of any business. We'll use two different ways later on in our analysis to estimate Occidental's fair value based on their free cash flows. So stick around. Metric number three, we want to see earn metric number three, we're looking at Occidental from the view of an individual shareholder. We want to see earnings per share growth. Occidental has diluted shareholders by 29%, mainly for some of these acquisitions. They issued preferred equity to Berkshire Hathaway through the Anadarko acquisition. We just learned in our last metric that Occidental has grown their earnings or their net incomes by 64%. This outpaces their shareholder dilution, meaning Occidental has grown their earnings per share over this time. This is a check on metric number three. Metric number four, we want to see free cash flow per share growth. A similar story here, Occidental has tripled their free cash flows, which far and away outpaces their 29% dilution. This is another big check on metric number four. So far to recap, through four metrics, we have three checks. Before we look at the company's debt or get to our valuations, let's cover our bonus. 
As our bonus metric, we want Occidental's dividends to be supported by their free cash flows. Occidental had to cut their dividends from 2019. They were cutting these all the way into 2021 as the company was struggling to pay back debt. They've increased their dividends in recent years. In the last couple of years, as things have turned around, they've been raising their dividend payouts. Right now, Occidental pays a 1% dividend yield. Since 2020, Occidental's dividends have been supported by their free cash flows very easily in recent years. They also support their dividends today, which is what we want to see. This is a check on our bonus. In recessions, it's businesses with a lot of debt that can have the biggest losses or even go bankrupt. Metric number five, we want Occidental's net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the sum of their free cash flows in their last five fiscal years. In this time, Occidental increased their debt a lot to fuel their Anadarko acquisition. At their peak, they had $38 billion in net debt. Right now, they have around $20 billion in net debt. They've been paying this off. In these last five fiscal years, their free cash flows have increased over this time. Occidental has produced $25 billion worth of free cash flow. In their last 12 months, they produced $8.4 billion of free cash flow. They could pay off their entire net debt position with just over two years of their current free cash flows. That's a great financial position to be in. This is a big check on our bonus. Occidental looks like it generates a ton of free cash flow compared to the debt in their business. But we still haven't found out what's Occidental potentially worth. Metric number six, we want Occidental's average five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. This is the first of two different ways we're valuing Occidental. Right now, they have an $85 billion enterprise value. In the last five years, they produced $25 billion of free cash flow, meaning they produce $5 billion in an average year. When that's divided by their enterprise value, it gives us a 5.9% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. That's above the yield from the 10-year treasury. On a current basis, Occidental produced $8.4 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When that's divided by their enterprise value, we get a 9.9% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. Both of these are above the risk premium we're looking for. They're well above the yield from the 10-year treasury. Coming in on metric number six, this is a check on Occidental. They're five for six on our analysis, including their bonus. We're not finished yet. Don't just run out and go buy the business. We still need to estimate their fair value per share and give our rating. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Occidental Petroleum. This takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based on the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with an average of Occidental's last three fiscal years worth of free cash flow. This includes both a very low period for the business and a very boom period. Then we're taking historical assumptions to grow these into the future. It's up to you to figure out if these will be accurate or not for Occidental. Assuming they grow their average free cash flows at 2% annually for the next decade, then in the following decade, assuming that these are flat, we'll add in their tangible book value to give an estimate of their net worth. If we want a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett wants from his investments, if today's valuations are the same 20 years into the future, an estimate of Occidental's fair value per share is around $73. That's $10 above their current stock price. Warren Buffett's been buying into the business as it's traded below $60. It looks like it's giving him a decent margin of safety in the company. Company. Keep in mind some key points. Occidental operates in a cyclical industry. They're a commodity producer. This has lowered their business predictability. The company came back from the brink of being very overly levered for their acquisitions. They've turned things around with strong capital allocation in the last couple of years. Warren Buffett's publicly praised the business and its CEO. They took what was a not so great company and a not so great operation and have really turned things around. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. In just a minute, we'll give our rating to Occidental, but we need to address something first. We've covered the numbers, but the qualitative factors may be even more important for their business. Why don't we find out what these are? We've got to start with the bad news first, so let's look at the factors supporting a short thesis. Number one, although Oxy's Permian wells exhibit very high initial production rates, they also decline very rapidly. Number two, the Anadarko acquisition bolstered Oxy's Permian footprint, but left it with other assets it didn't really want, such as its WES midstream stake. Number three, Oxy will have to share the spoils from its ambitious carbon capture plans, and since it isn't providing financing or engineering, it may have to give away a sizable working interest. Some of that factor may not be as important. Occidental recently entered into an agreement to acquire direct air capture company Carbon Engineering. 
With the bad news out of the way, let's look at the good news. These are the factors supporting a long thesis. Number one, Oxy has a dominant position in the Permian Basin, which is the cheapest source of production in the United States, and it's expected to be a major growth engine in the next few years. Number two, Oxy's conventional assets in the Gulf of Mexico and the Middle East complemented shale operations nicely by generating stable cash flows from assets with a much lower base decline rate. Number three, the low carbon venture segment is synergistic with Oxy's chemical business and Oxy's EOR portfolio holdings and expert Oxy's EOR portfolio holdings and expertise give it a natural advantage in carbon capture. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative factors for Oxy's business. Now it's time for our rating. Occidental Petroleum is a big holding from both Warren Buffett and the British Warren Buffett Prem Watsa. It's crushed the market in the last three years, having compounded returns of 87% annually. Oxy goes five for six on our analysis, including checking our bonus. The company's returns were the only thing that's off, yet again, they operate in a cyclical business and they're a commodity producer. One of the strongest advantages to have is to be a low-cost producer. Oxy, with its big interest in the Permian Basin in West Texas, is a low-cost producer. That shows up in their financials. The business has had phenomenal capital allocation in the last few years turning a not-so-hot company into a company worthy of investment from Warren Buffett. It seems Warren Buffett has a very simple investment thesis in Occidental. A lot of markets are trading for high valuations. Oil seems to trade in line with its historical valuations. Plus, the price of oil may be higher for longer. Keep in mind this isn't financial advice. Oxy looks attractive compared to the 10-year treasury. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, if you believe those assumptions, you want a 15% rate of return, and Oxy's multiples are the same, an estimate of their fair value is around $73 per share. That's a solid $10 above their current stock price. When we combine all the factors of our analysis, Occidental looks like an excellent candidate for further research. Go out and learn more about this business. If you enjoyed learning about Oxy, subscribe to the channel for more.